Mai tu tare gan? Pasukat yang Vice Chancellor, Professor Sami Thomas. The Chief Guest of the Day, Professor Juan Fernando Pantron Guterres. Mrs. Lisa, friends and colleagues, students. It's a happy day. We have uh, another periodic lecture in the series of lectures that Universities of Kerala have been organizing in cooperation with the Kerala State Higher Education Council. Mohammed Gandhi University has been in the forefront of organizing a series of such lectures, including Nobel laureates lectures and lectures. We are fortunate uh, to have this great scholar, distinguished sociologist from Argentina, Professor Caldro. And I must thank the Kerala State Higher Education Council for having arranged this lecture here in MGU. He has been lecturing in three, four places in Kerala. Already he has, uh, he has had another lecture in University of Kandu. This is the second one and uh, in Chavantrum, I think uh, Professor Calderon will have another two lectures. I must thank uh, Kerala State Higher Education Council for facilitating this erudite program and KCHA, headed by Professor Michael Tarin and Professor Sanal Mohan. They have been very kind enough to arrange this lecture here in NG University on behalf of Indian University Center for Social Science Research and School of Social Sciences. Let me, first of all, welcome you all on behalf of uh, MG University and also on behalf of uh, School of Social Sciences and also the Inter University Center for Social Science Research and uh, Extension. My task is uh, very simple to finally welcome our chief guest today. We have with us uh, Professor Michael Tarragan, who is uh, chairing this session, a distinguished academic, a historian, who he is now currently the chairman of the Kerala State, I mean, Kerala Council for Historical Research in Trivandrum. He was former Vice Chancellor of Kandahar University, Ramakrishna Hegde Chair in Institute for Social and Economic Change in Bangalore. He was Professor Senior Fellow in Center for Development Studies, a very distinguished uh, economic historian, a well known writer, orator and uh, I think uh, he doesn't need any introduction to this audience actually. I formally welcome Professor Nagita. Our Vice Chancellor, Professor Samu Thomas, has been kind enough to rush here I think in the midst of a lot of programs here. He's uh, truly an internationalist, traveling from one part of the world to the other in search of uh, uh, knowledge, in search of collaborations. I think he has, he has been actually a uh, scholar in different countries on behalf of Mahatma Gandhi University. He has been traveling and he has been the cultural and academic ambassador of India to various countries, I think. He doesn't need any, again, an introduction. Formally, I thank and also welcome to Sabi Thomas. The chief guest of the day, Professor Juan Fernando Catron Guterres, is a distinguished scholar from Latin America. One problem with um, Latin American studies in India is that not many universities are offering courses or programs in Latin American studies. I know that as a student and also teacher in international relations. I have come across only two, three universities in India offering 
specialized programs on Latin American studies. Though, in literature, particularly in comparative literature, we have a number of scholars uh, working on various uh, novels, I mean, the literary contributions from Latin America. But Kerala has a special interest in Latin America for obvious reasons. In another two years' time, we are going to have another World Cup in the northern part of Kerala. In every house, we, we have at least one uh, person wearing the jersey of uh, either Brazil or Argentina or Colombia. <laughs> I think from Pele to Maradona and also Messi, these are all the household names in Kerala. Hmm? Uh, but uh, we have also uh, great interest in Latin American literature. I think Kerala, I think Malayalam, several Latin American novels have been translated from Octavia Pass to Marques, from Pablo Neruda to, I think we are DC books, if you go to the DC books, you can see a number of uh, Latin American novels and poems being translated into our language. And we are not alien to this land in that way. Also, for several years, I think uh, educationalists in Kerala have been familiar with the names of Olaf Freire, and uh, several scholars uh, from Latin America. And we have been uh, engaging Latin American scholarship in different ways. Perhaps at least from 1970s onwards, if I am correct, we have this Liberation Theology School has been very active in Kerala, drawing a lot of inspiration and insights from the Latin American experiences for a long time. And also, we have a great traditions of what we call as uh, participatory experiments being tried out from experiments from Brazil and other countries. And uh, we have many scholars coming from, uh, from, from Brazil and other parts of Latin America for the last several years. And also, um, scholars of you know, if I share a personal experience, my understanding and my uh, association with the Latin America started with uh, an unsuccessful attempt to compete for a for an essay competition about 36 or 38 years back in association with the bicentennial of uh, Simon Bolivar. I was one of the contestants, unsuccessfully contested. But what happened was that, and though it was an unsuccessful attempt. That turned out to be a good article in Malayalam, a popular article way back in the 1980s, early 1980s. The reason why I'm referring to Simon Bolivar is that he is a person who is holding this Simon Bolivar chair, at least till last year in Cambridge University. It's a great thing that, uh, like Simon Bolivar, I think at least for half a dozen countries he is the father, he is the liberator, going from one country to the other. Like that, you have been working in different Latin American countries, a new science of people in that sense, a, a new liberator in that way. A great thing. Um, I think his scholarship goes beyond uh, Latin America, if I am correct. He has been working in, in diverse fields. Uh, we have been listening to, we have been hearing and learning and also reading a lot of literature in Latin America from the critics of modernist theories from 1950s onwards, especially from uh, Paul Barron to Paul Sisi, from Andre Gunther Frank to the whole whole system analysis. I'm sure that uh, Professor Calderon must be associating with uh, Gunther Frank also at some point of time. It's a great thing. So uh, for, for us, developing uh, studies, stu students and teachers and also scholars, Latin America has been a, a, an area of great interest because uh, we consider this area as one of the first uh, continents having um, shown the experience of the Global South. Our Global South has been very important in global intellectual discourses and like that. And you know, we have also heard about the Latin American Commission, Economic Commission. I think we are also associating with this commission. It's a great thing that this commission has been 
instrumental in, in taking up issues of development in a different way, offering critiques of the mainstream development and so on and so forth. And as part of it, uh, I'm sure that uh, if, I'm, if I'm not uh, mistaken, I think you have been instrumental in bringing out human development reports of several Latin American countries. This is a great thing that you have been associating with the human development report of several countries, not just one country. Like that. So Latin America, in that sense, is uh, is uh, is a continent with a lot of uh, potential. It's not that uh, India is just a member of the BRICS, the, the 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 collectivity of the global south of the new era, like that. But unfortunately, um, we don't have that kind of. Uh, historical association with the Latin America, with the trade and commerce like that, our trade with the Latin American countries. And we have about 20 countries in Latin America, plus uh, 17, plus uh, some um, dependencies and like that. Yeah. yeah. But if you take the entire, uh, entire spectrum of countries in Latin America, I think the population doesn't even come to the half of the size of the India's population. That's about uh, 650 million, less than 650 million, if I'm not. Yeah, and now, yeah, okay. So we have doubled the size of the population of Latin America. And uh, it's in that sense uh, a, a great uh, opportunity to understand and to explore Latin American experiences like that. Most often, we understand uh, these. Uh, experiences from the point of view of political economy or development experience and like that. Little do we engage Latin America from uh, cultural and also from other non-political or non-economic points of view. A little bit of it, I think uh, part of it is your theme of today, how multiculturalism is significant in that way. So uh, I will just draw your attention to some of his contributions. There is a there's an impressive list of achievements of uh, Professor uh, Calderon. He is currently Professor and Director of Research at the National University of San Martin, Argentina. And he is Professor in the same university at the Latin American Faculty of Social Sciences at the University of Cordoba. I think uh, he last year, till last year, he was at the University of Cambridge. Uh, he was holding the position of the Simon Bolivar Chair. I think uh, that was a time when Samuel Mohan was also in the University of Cambridge. Yes. I think you are... Same time. Yeah, same time. A great thing that uh, his uh, associations... Uh, yeah. So he has, you know, we, he has taught several universities across continents. Uh, he has taught in United States, Austin, Chicago, Berkeley, Cornell, in Europe, University of Barcelona, University of Catalonia, and in Latin America, in Bolivia, Mexico, Ecuador, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, Chile, I think, I don't know whether you have such a transnational academic scholarship uh, to this level, I like that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, a great thing that I, I came to know that uh, he did his PhD under uh, Manuel Castle. A great thing. That we have been reading Manuel Castle for a long time. Great achievement, and, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, you know I don't want to read the entire history of his academic scholarship and how impressive it is, and also how fascinating and inspiring it is for the young Celsius. Thank you very much for being with us, and uh, on behalf of the entire academic community here, and on my own personal behalf, I extend you a very warm welcome. I also extend uh, Mrs. Nishia for being with us to share our uh, experiences here. And also I must thank each and everyone here and uh, let me first uh, thank Professor Tanul Mohan. It was he who actually brought you here. <laughs> it's not just because that he was, he has been our colleague here, but he has been intellectually interacting with the several institutions here. I must thank uh, Professor Tanul Mohan and formally welcome. Thank you very much. I also thank uh, Professor Abhilash Babu who is also heading the School of Social Sciences and associating with this program. My friends and colleagues sitting here, I don't want to name each and every one, Father K. Chaud, Professor Matthew Gurian, Professor Thomas, Professor uh, um, uh, 
uh, Matthew Vargis, and also the entire team from KCHR. We have Dr. Rachel, Dr. Uh, Fashila, and uh, Dr. Alex, and the other friends in IUCCR all have been uh, working together for the last several days to make this program uh, a successful one and possible one. Thank you very much. And I welcome you all, each and all sitting here for this program. Thank you very much. And I formally uh, request uh, the chairman, Professor Matthew, oh, sorry, sorry, Michael Theragan, to conduct the proceedings. Thank you very much.
theology of revelation became very popular in Kerala too. In fact, I missed your lecture in Kannur because I had already agreed to attend a seminar uh, honoring Dr. Reverend Dr. Sebastian Tappet, who is the leading liberation theologist, was no more in, in Kerala. Uh, that was yesterday, it was held in Kochi, in the city of Kochi. So I'm saying that these two things <coughs> seems to have intellectually <coughs> um, helped Kerala to forge links with Latin America. But as also I'm repeating what has been said already by Professor Siti, the institutional arrangements for um, international cooperation in studies are very, very weak uh, between Latin America and, and <coughs> not only Kerala but also I think for the whole of India. I think there should be immediate steps to overcome that. But I would like to point out two things which may be of interest to at least to the students and young scholars who are here. One is that in the early uh, 1970s, when I myself was a student of development studies, had taken a year and a half away uh, from his, his studies of history, studies in history, to join the Center for Development Studies in Trivandrum, where the main point of discussion of the different schools of thought that were at that time popular uh, in development studies was of course the Latin American. Everybody from Caldoso who was of course, I believe, which uh, was on teacher, uh, was of course the president of of Brazil, uh, Raul Prebish, all, all down the line, every one of them were known to us who were students of development studies in the 1970s. Of course that was a kind of a, almost like a cult, almost like a fad, and of course it ended up with the dependency theory, uh, known mainly for uh, other scholars too. But now that kind of a cultish status is no more attributed to it. I'm saying all this because uh, this was part of the making of at least a generation or two of uh, social science thinkers, not only in Kerala but also in different parts of India. Then you also go further. Uh, when I was a student, of, uh, I was a scholar, I was, I, was, uh, I was working in the faculty of the CDS. One day uh, a Latin American research scholar came to see me. He was studying geography, he was doing, geography, doing his PhD in Sobo in Paris. And um, he came to discuss some of the special features of the topography of Kerala and um, he told me that his main concern of research was the three-tiered tree topography of Kerala because wherever you go the tree, tree growth in Kerala is three-tiered. You've got underbush, you've got uh, slightly bigger plants and then you have got long and very tall so this is the way in which Kerala's farming pattern has created the topography. He said that this is this I want to investigate further. So I told him that you know this was the case also in the 18th century. I'm a historian, and I gave him. I told him uh, about a book written in the 18th century by two uh, priests who went all the way to Vatican, to Rome, to complain about the European missionaries who were operating in Canada. Uh, 
uh, that book is now part of our uh, heritage, historical heritage. It's called Vartamana Pustha, the book of news. <coughs> it's a travel book, possibly the first travel travel ever written in any Indian language. And uh, The author, a priest from Kerala, from very nearby, from a place called Ramagar, he, his uh, ship at that time there was no Suez Canal, so it had to circumvent the African continent, and the ship ended up in Baha in Brazil, and they stayed in Baha for a week or so, and he was impressed by the tree tire, uh, uh, tree. Um, type of growth that he found in Bath. So I told this 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 uh, joker. He said he was he was so taken aback. He, he, he wanted the whole book to be translated, which I could not do, but at least that passage I translated in English for him. So I'm saying that you know in eighteenth century itself at least mm -hmm. one common feature between that a part of that and Kerala was not. Um, subsequently, of course, there was other instances of links because these two priests ended up in Lisbon, in Portugal, and of course in Rome. But that was soon after the success of the American Revolution. And George Washington was the hero in the intellectual circles <coughs> Of Europe, and um, as, uh, I'm, as I'm, I can recall, the Anglican Church, the official Brit uh, British English uh, Protestant Church, supported the British, but numerous small Protestant groups supported the Americans in the India. So they had brought the news of a young leader, leader of the movement called George Washington to Europe. And these two priests from Kerala were also fascinated by, by George Washington, though they never had a chance to meet him. And they, in their, and now works of that sort is being done by illustrious historians like Paul, uh, Paul uh, Pius Malek and the Jawaharlal University. And I myself was also involved in this work. We are fascinated by the fact that the, uh, the, these priests came back again via Baha. And in two months' time, in Baha, there was a national revolt, more or less like the American Revolution, but it of course it didn't succeed. By the indigenous uh, elements of the Portuguese uh, earlier migrants. But then what happened? They come back to, Ke uh, to Kerala, to India, and two priests who were otherwise uh, were known as uh, rebellious uh, in their attitude, they become the leaders of a very famous incident in Goa history, Goa being the Portuguese bastion in Kerala, in India, and they try to liberate Goa. That also fails. And seven <coughs> priests were uh, <coughs> so, <coughs> expelled from Goa, and 45 people were uh, assassinated, or so, uh, uh, killed, to suppress this. So there is a link of revolutionary uh, uh, understanding of the situation at, in the 18th century itself, uh, linking, of course, Kerala. Latin America. Um, if I, being a historian, being a teacher throughout my life, if you let me, I'll go on, keep talking about this and, and, and give, give not a chance for you to express your views. Uh, so that I won't do. I will stop here. But I would also announce that we are taking this opportunity to release uh, the first working paper published by the uh, 
Kerala okay, Council for Historical Research. Uh, this is a lecture given by one of the leading associates, uh, international associates, that's of course uh, Professor Ole Donquist, who is Professor of Political Science in the University of Oslo. But of course this, um, this is given as a public lecture in memory of Putumpalli Rakhavan, who people from Kerala would be very, very well. He himself, through his own life, had proved the true life of a person who think differently. And to perpetuate his memory, the Kerala Council for Historical Research is uh, <coughs> conducting this annual lectures and also trying to publish it as working papers, and not working papers, but also as, as, as the text of the public So the, uh, the public lecture was, of course, the title itself to imply what it is all about. Kerala efforts at inclusion <coughs> in view of the global crisis of social democracy. Of course, having been a political scientist uh, probably the last stronghold of social democracy in Western Europe, the Scandinavian countries. <clears throat> uh, Ole is uh, well known as an advocate of social democracy, as one form of resistance to the extreme wings, <laughs> that is, the extreme polarities of international politics. So that book is being released today. And Professor Sabu Thomas, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, has also kindly agreed to release it by handing over one copy to Professor Gutierrez and one copy to Professor C. D. So I invite you to do that. Mm -hmm. Chairman of KCHR Tiwanso, our distinguished uh, speaker, uh, Professor Juan Fernando Calderon Goitres, Professor CB, Professor Sanal Mohan, Professor Alicia, and my dear colleagues students and friends. Let us extend a very warm welcome with a big clap to uh, Professor Fernando. You know, it's easy for me to call you Fernando because we have many Fernandos in uh, Latin America as my academic friends. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm extremely happy that uh, Higher Education Council is doing a wonderful job. 
we are able to get distinguished speakers from different parts of the world. We had seven Nobel laureates funded by KCHR, uh, sorry, the, the Higher Education Council, as erudite speakers. And Mahatma Gandhi University could bring more than 80 distinguished speakers from different parts of the world, which includes also scientists, engineers, and scientists. And we have active cooperation with all these people, most of them. You could start exchange of PhD students, you could do joint work, you could publish quite a lot of papers together. So I thank Kerala Education Council for this wonderful erudite lecture series. And today we have a very distinguished speaker. Right now he is Argentina. He's the director of research in St. Martin University, where we had some cooperation. One of my students went to St. Martin University in Argentina, spent six months. And uh, Professor Fernando has been to several countries, he lectured in Austin, lectured in Chicago, Berkeley, Cornell, Barcelona, and many Latin American countries. And very interestingly, uh, he was a chair professor, Simon Bolivar visiting chair professorship in Cambridge. Uh, since I cooperate very actively with um, Venezuela, I have a great friend in Venezuela, uh, Alexandro Muller. He's right now in, uh, in, uh, in Spain. And when Professor Muller came to my campus, he came five times to my campus, to my group. And Professor Muller told me about this uh, Simon Bolivar Distinguished Chair Professorship. This was actually started in sometime in 1968. Given by, the total fund was given by the Venezuelan government for uh, Latin American studies. And right now, the chair is actually held by uh, Professor Muller's friend. Uh, I think he's from Venezuela. He's actually a, a zoology professor. I don't know whether you know him. His name is... Uh, he is a scientist. He is actually working on butterflies. That's what uh, uh, Professor Muller told me. Because I have regular interaction with uh, Alexander Muller. He is right now in Spain. I am going to see him next month. When you look at Latin America, I interact with many Latin American countries. When you look at Latin America, Latin American countries are very interesting because of diverse culture. You see native culture, the European culture, the African culture. You see cultural diversity, linguistic diversity, and ethnic diversity. And if you look at the, the intruders, the, the, the colonial group, you know, they went to uh, Latin America, which includes Spain, Portugal, and France. More Spain and Portugal. And what they did is they actually imposed the European model into these countries. And literally all the native population were actually, you know, they were killed. And they couldn't survive much of that. But off like there are a lot of new developments coming in. Some of the government actually made a lot of reformation to recognize the indigenous rights. That's why the Latin American studies are, you know, countries are so interested. But there are a lot of challenges actually popped up. The fundamental challenges I mean, uh, for the accepted norms and citizenship. Therefore, a lot of studies are being taken place in this area. I'm sure that uh, Professor Fernando is giving an exciting talk on uh, multiculturalism. That's extremely important for uh, Latin American context. I'm sure you will all enjoy the, the talk, like us have a brainstorming discussion on the topic. With all your permission, I declare that the erudite lecture series, a lecture to be given by uh, Professor Fernando is inaugurated, and I wish you all the best. Thank you.
now we listen to those